And in the United States, uh, Lexington and Saratoga were the two battle cruisers that were furthest along. These are CC-1 and CC-3. Uh, and the two battle cruisers whose shipyards, uh, Four River Shipbuilding and uh, New York Ship in Camden, New Jersey, had the most political clout. So they were able to continue construction of their ships as aircraft carriers. These carriers were supposed to displace 33,000 tons uh, and could have up to 3,000 tons of additional uh, torpedo and bomb protection added. Uh, the American carriers were too far along, uh, about 35% complete at the time of their conversion, which uh, meant that they broke the treaty limits on displacement and they would end up being uh, about 35,000 tons standard and about 43,000 tons full load displacement as completed. Uh, overall, the carriers were going to have a length of 888 feet, still had a width of uh, 106 feet like the battle cruisers, used the same power plant as the battle cruisers. Uh, and really, these ships were a trade-off. Because they were converted from battle cruisers, they had some shortcomings, uh, and they had some really uh, interesting features. So as battle cruisers, they had the super effective uh, five-layer torpedo defense of the standard type battleships. On top of that, they used turboelectric drive instead of geared turbines. And the turboelectric drive was basically boilers provide steam to turbo generators. And then those turbo generators in, uh, provide electrical power to electric motors, which turn the propellers. Whereas on uh, steam turbine ships like Iowa class battleships, the boilers provide steam to both turbo generators that produce electrical power for lighting uh, and steam to turbines, which provide propulsive power. Uh, the turbo generators were heavier, but they allowed for greater compartmentalization. Uh, you didn't need to have the propeller shaft attached directly to the turbine attached via steam pipe to the uh, boilers. You could have uh, the boilers attached to the turbo generators and then just run electrical power via power cables from that to the motors. So the motors could be much further aft in the ship. Uh, so you didn't have long propeller shafts going through the ship. Some of New Jersey's propeller shafts run uh, half the length of the vessel. This is a lot of weight uh, and it causes vibrations. Uh, also, they were able to subdivide each boiler into its own separate armored box around the perimeter of a ship. So a torpedo hit not only has to break through the five-layered uh, liquid and or void-loaded uh, torpedo defense system, it then hits boiler rooms, which you might knock out a boiler or two, um, but would not have any force to get through that into the machinery spaces inboard of that where the actual propulsive equipment was. And because you're just using electrical power, uh, if boiler goes down, you can just send that electrical power elsewhere or take electrical power from elsewhere and keep all of your motors running. Uh, so despite their really poor armor, they had uh, pretty decent survivability uh, in terms of their capabilities. Let's see. Uh, so that was a positive side of the battle cruiser design. The negative side was uh, unlike the Iowa class, which is built a lot more like an aircraft carrier in that they get wider as you go down the ship and they are pretty wide at the stern of the ship. Uh, the Lexington class looks more like a canoe, which is more of the uh, tradition for shipbuilding at that time, especially for capital ships and standard type ships. So they are narrowest at the ends and widest at the center, which means that uh, at the end of the ship, at the stern, where aircraft are landing, the hull gets really narrow. So there's not as much room for hangar space and there's not as much room for a wide uh, flight deck at the stern of the ship. 
Now, uh, fortunately, the Lexington class are absolutely massive. They're basically the same size and uh, pretty close in displacement to the Iowa class battleships, which made them the largest aircraft carriers until the Midway class was commissioned after World War II. And they had some of the tallest hangars until the Forestal class supercarriers came around in the late 50s. Uh, so th these ships were really large and much larger than prototype aircraft carriers of the time. Uh, the United States is Langley, the Japanese Hosho, uh, British uh, carriers like Argus and Hermes. Um, they were all small and designs for other carriers building off of that were also small. Uh, for example, the purpose-built Ranger, which was used, uh, built of steel, assembled for the battlecruiser Ranger, which was only like 2% complete. Uh, she was a purpose-designed and built ship, but she was much smaller than other American aircraft carriers. Uh, and so this drastic increase in size of carriers from small experimental ships to full fleet-sized capital ship vessels uh, caused by the Washington Naval Treaty really accelerated carrier designs and uh, allowed the various signatories to perfect carrier doctrine uh, and make carriers capital ships in the interwar years. So, uh, some outstanding design features of the Lexington class carriers. They don't trust aircraft, so each one has eight eight-inch guns built around the superstructure called an island on a carrier. Uh, these are cruiser-sized guns. Uh, they don't really have great arcs of fire. If they fire over the flight deck, they damage the aircraft. Uh, so really, they should only fire in one direction, but in an emergency, they can be fired in any direction. Uh, but the aircraft has such a long strike range that enemy ships don't come in range of that. They also had 12 5-inch 25 caliber guns. These were a good anti-aircraft weapon. Uh, eventually, 50 caliber machine guns were added as a close-in anti-aircraft weapon. Um, the Navy planned on putting 1.1-inch anti-aircraft guns on these ships, quadruple mounts, uh, five of them initially. They didn't have enough, so five three-inch guns were loaded onto these ships. Uh, the plan was to remove the 8-inch guns and the 5-inch 25 guns and replace them with eight 5-inch 38s in gun mounts, uh, enclosed mounts around the island where the 8-inch guns had been, and eight 5-inch 38 pedestal mounts around the sides of the ship where the 12 5-inch 25s had been. Uh, the pedestal mounts were a little bit heavier, uh, and the space freed up would make room for some of the 1.1-inch guns. This was carried out on Saratoga. It uh, was never carried out on Lexington. Lexington had her uh, eight-inch guns removed, but the five-inch gun houses were not in place yet, so uh, she had them replaced with seven additional quadruple 1.1-inch guns, and it was the configuration she was in uh, during the Battle of the Coral Sea. So, um, during the interwar period, the United States, Japan, Great Britain, to a lesser extent, experiment with their carriers. Uh, and the United States famously hold a series of uh, 30-some-odd uh, fleet problems in the Atlantic, Caribbean, and uh, the Pacific, where they break their fleet up and uh, have a red force and a blue force, and they uh, fight it out. Sometimes one of the forces is called black, uh, random color designations. But uh, these forces fight it out. And when Lexington and Saratoga were finally completed, uh, it took seven years to complete them on top of the uh, four years of development as a battle cruiser um, since authorization and the almost decade of development prior to that. Uh, but when these ships joined the fleet in 1927, they were... Uh, used extensively in tests. And these tests showed that the carriers were not effective operating with the battle fleet, much like battle ships, they would, or battle cruisers, excuse me, they would be shot to pieces. They did do a good job of replacing the battle cruisers, which they evolved out of, 
as the scouts for the fleet. Uh, and much like the battle cruisers, they were more effective operating in separate scouting groups than attached to the battle fleet. Uh, and as a part of this scouting group, they could effectively uh, launch first strikes on enemy fleets or shore installations, such as the Panama Canal or an anchorage containing the enemy fleet. The U.S. Navy tested this before the war, and uh, the tests were very successful. The Japanese also tested this before the war uh, and would use it during the war with their attack on Pearl Harbor. Um, carrier aircraft evolve into three different distinct types. The fighter plane, the dive bomber, which also was often used as a scouting plane, and the torpedo bomber, which could carry torpedoes if attacking ships, or bombs if launching horizontal bombing raids on uh, short targets. Uh, the Lexingtons were designed to carry about 70 aircraft, but uh, the United States became really good at, one, storing additional aircraft on the flight deck in addition to the ones in the hangar, and two, uh, because they had such high hangars, they were able to tie aircraft to the overhead. So even though they could only operate about 70 at a time, uh, they had about 30 replacement aircraft they could carry. Uh, so maybe they couldn't launch all 100 in an alpha strike. But as aircraft were damaged during a battle, they could be lowering and uh, activating additional aircraft. So when the war actually happens, uh, Saratoga is in... Uh, She's just gotten out of a yard period and she's on her way to Pearl Harbor. Lexington is uh, delivering aircraft to, uh, I believe, Midway, although it could have been Wake Island. Um, and so neither one is in Pearl Harbor during the attack. Uh, these ships only have a single rudder and they have a really high length to beam ratio. They're long and narrow, uh, which unfortunately causes them to have a really wide turning radius, which makes them susceptible to torpedo attacks. Fortunately, they have great torpedo defense. They aren't going to be sunk by a torpedo attack, uh, but they have trouble maneuvering. So Saratoga is damaged a number of times early in the war by Japanese submarines. Uh, very unfortunate ship. She doesn't go into a battle in which she isn't damaged. Lexington, uh, manages to get into the fight a couple of times in the early war. She raids some islands along with Enterprise early on, uh, and then she's sent to the Coral Sea with Yorktown to stop the Japanese carrier Shokaku and Suikaku. Uh, and whereas the later Yorktown-class carriers are able to maneuver pretty effectively and dodge a lot of the things thrown at them, uh, the large Lexington is not, and she takes... Uh, a series of hits that uh, result in her loss. Um, the U.S. get a lot of combat experience out of this, and uh, 